Hi again. We're going to be looking at uh, the max, min, and terrace points of second degree and third degree functions. Today, though, we'll, we'll keep to just uh, this particular function that I have written up. Uh, in order to analyze these with the derivative, we'll have to review what we know. Before we do that, let's just take a look at what the problem is. It says that using the derivative, find the max, min, or terrace points to this function. Uh, in the first part, we're going to always need to visualize what's happening. And like I've recommended before, go ahead and get your calculator or computer program and draw the little graph. And here it is. Because when we're looking for a max or a min, and of course by that we mean the local maximum and minimum, and then we mean the little places that are like this, or a, a terrace will go up and then swoop around. And of course I can't draw. So we're going to be looking for the points that have a derivative that is, well, flat. Uh, so where the tangent hits, it's going to be level like that and have a k value of 0. All right, so that's not so bad. So the first thing we need to do is take the derivative of this function. So let's do that. And by now, this is going to be really easy for you. Uh, taking the derivative is, is simple. So it's done now. And here is the derivative of the function. Now, we are looking for the place where the derivative is 0. So we'll set it to 0, and then we'll algebraically manipulate this until we can find the place, the x, that makes that true. So let's take a look. I went ahead and factored this. And when you do that, you can see we have this, and we say, OK, 3x times another set here has to be 0. So that means that at least one of those things must be 0. So let's say, for instance, that 3x is the 0. Then what does x have to be? Well, 0. So that'll be our 1 solution. And what does that have to be? In other words, everything inside the parenthesis there. 2, and you put it together with negative x, well, I think you get the picture now. So let's, let's go ahead and do this. So 2 minus 2, obviously that gives you 0. And 0 times 3 gives you 0. So all right, that, that, that shouldn't be too strange. And of course, we know from the graph, when we're looking at it, that of course, when x is 0, the function has a value down there. And you can see that well, we'd have a tangent there. Just like when x is 2, you go down to the graph, and you're going to get your tangent there. So it's, it's not so strange. Let's continue then. OK, we need to take each x and put it into the function and see what comes out. Because we need to have a point. As it, as it said, we need, we need a place. It's not just what x makes it true. But we're looking for the actual point. So when, when we do this, when we put them in, 0 is really simple. That goes away. That goes away. All that's left is negative 5. Uh, that cleans up real nice. And how about this one when it is 2? All right. For that, well, just, just go ahead and do the numbers. I've cleaned it up for you. And you'll get these, of course. You'll get the negative 5 for the 1 and then minus 1 for the other. So it it's nice to be able to think, OK, what have we got? We have to take the derivative to find the x. Then we take the x and put it in to find the y. And then we do that in the other case, too. You see how it's important when you do your problems keep things nice and clean and, and lined up. And if you have trouble drawing, well, get a ruler. Um, I can't use a ruler on this computer program. so. <laughs> but it this does clean up nicely. The point, I called it P1, that is right here. 
and then the other point p2 is right there and of course we expect to see this function to have a tangent that is flat or a derivative of zero all right see you next time